So now we're doing something else I've not done before, which is messing with a slip clutch like this, which of course protects the drive line from shocks and jolts and things along those lines. Now the problem is if these things sit for a while, uh, like I believe this one has, and if not, it probably hasn't gotten this treatment like since between 98 and 02 when they made this baler. <laughs> uh, one thing that could be necessary at times, according to the manual, I mean, I don't really have a clue what the heck's going on, but we back those bolts off of there, the specified amount, in this case five turns, and we run the uh, PTO for five seconds at a time and it breaks those discs loose from, uh, from sitting. They get really hot and then, you know, you just tighten the bolts back down. So let's try that. <laughs> Well, I kind of have my doubts about how much it actually did. I, I did see a little bit of stuff come flying loose on this thing, which was kind of nice. I know it hasn't been sitting without running for too long because the guy ran it for me when I went and looked at it a couple weeks ago. So I think some of that actually did come out of the clutch. Uh, it just didn't really seem to do all that much. I don't actually see any proof other than that cloud of stuff that anything happened. And the manual specifically said the clutch will get really warm and I touch it, it's still like not, so. <laughs> but you know, whatever, at least now if we have any problems I can say I did this. Don't think it hurt anything. Got all the bolts tightened back down and then I uh, torqued them to I, I think the book said like 40 to 45 foot pounds. So now we're working on adjusting all these chains. There's these idlers which are controlled by these springs which is of course what puts tension on these things. And so far so good. Both of these smaller ones have both been within like a quarter inch of where they're supposed to be. This one I kind of have some doubts about because if we look over here there's this block and all these things are a little cattywampus. But so far this is going a lot better than everything I found when I <laughs> went into that square baler. This is supposed to be 14 and 3 quarters inches. You know what, that's actually closer than I thought it would be. So this is the pickup, that's what, you know, obviously picks up all the hay with those teeth and throws it in the machine. And the guard setup on this was absolutely maddening. You know, the wheel bolts to it, then there's a three-piece guard, and New Holland could have just made a one-piece guard held on with, what do you guys think, you know, one, two, three, maybe like five bolts, but they didn't. They made a three-piece guard held together. That's not all of them with probably like, I don't know, a huge amount of fasteners and just to make things as rage-inducing as possible, they did that thing which General Motors did on their 1980s trucks where the, the head of a bolt and the nut on the bolt are two different sizes. So like if you've got a bolt going this way and a bolt coming this way and you can only access one side of it, it takes four wrenches for the two sides as just as irritating as can possibly be getting this off. Especially because due to all of these reasons, I don't think anybody really has maintained this very much. And so this was just full of earthly treasures in here. And um, so, you know, and obviously that gets all over the threads on this hardware so they don't come off. And I'm out here like using the angle grinder to grind the heads off of bolts and, <sighs> and breaker bars and, and everything else under the sun. But you know, whatever, just a pickup chain that's really cattywampus. Now I will say that side is the better and the worst side. It's the better side for playing the chain. Um, no, I guess that one is the better side. And it's worse because that's a three-piece guard design. This one I came over here, luckily it's thankfully only two. You can see I only needed a couple tools to do this. It seriously took me about three hours to disassemble just the guards on this thing. It's like I said, a bazillion different bolts, all the different sizes New Holland could possibly fit into this design. And then of course, none of them want to move because they probably haven't moved since I was in like elementary school or whatever. And this chain, this is the fun one. This one actually does have some adjustment left in that tensioner. The one on the other side doesn't, but I, <laughs> I'm pretty cheap. I'm not even cheap enough to run this. So we're gonna go to the store and pick up some new chain and then we gotta come in here and adjustify that. I don't actually know what chain this is. I haven't gotten to that part of the manual yet. Uh, but I guess the biggest setback today was figuring out that there's thousands of dollars worth of parts which are supposed to be on this machine which aren't on them. But, you know, ultimately, it kind of sucks, but I didn't really buy this thing uh, to do twine bales with. I bought it as a net wrap machine. 
In the defense of the previous owner, he did say it was a net wrap machine. That's how it was advertised. That's how I bought it. But like I said, when I got there, he said, it's got all the twine stuff under there, so it should do twine. And he was half right because it does have all the twine stuff under there to do the twine. What's missing is all the twine stuff that goes on this side. Ah! Oh, I, I mean, I, the guy seemed pretty nice. For all I know, he, um, you know, he, I well, actually, I know for a fact he bought it used, so maybe this stuff was missing when he had it. He said he never tried to mess with it, he just used it for net wrap, so, you know, whatever. It's just a risk you take when you buy stuff used, especially if you don't know what the heck you're doing with it. But considering I don't know what the heck I'm doing with any of this stuff, I think today went pretty well. No major roadblocks, didn't find any major problems with the baler. Few things here near to replace, like if this thing makes it through the season without exploding like my main two pieces of farm equipment last year did, I'll replace these springs because you can see there's no more adjustment in this and, uh, and still it's not as springy as it's supposed to be. It's not taking as much force as it is. So I could shorten this bolt, but I think the main problem is the spring is just worn out as is the one on the other side. And um, man, I I'm wondering if this is the original pickup chain. say other than the various missing parts on this baler the biggest negative surprise on this seems to be these sensors now the way these work there's one on each side of the machine and if you have a lopsided bale it registers more on one than the other because there's this little arm that actuates this potentiometer thing here uh, they both seem to be working however they're both stuck so nothing moves looks like they haven't moved in quite a while I did the one on the other side took probably three or four hours by the time I figured out how it worked took it apart cleaned it and put it back together so, the guy said everything worked, so he left this out. I wonder if there's anything else that we're going to be finding out about. You can see I already removed the uh, the guards, which did a great job of guarding all this material so it stayed in here up against this thing. Clean some of this filth off without actually damaging the sensor too, too much. Now, of course, this uses tiny metric bolts, which I don't have replacements for. If we lose one, because I learned that on the other side, spent like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes digging around the shop to find a suitable replacement. I'm leaving the guards off this thing uh, for the sensors. I might regret it later, but on both sides, it doesn't look like they ever actually did anything to keep the sensors from getting packed full of dirt. As you guys saw, pretty much all they do is hold dirt in a, in a guard-shaped blob. Oh, this is old, brittle plastic. I hope I don't break it. The other side came apart fairly easily. Okay, yeah, we're good. All right, well, goodish. Well, this isn't the sensor. Obviously, this is the sensor. This arm pivots back and forth. This piece turns side to side, and that's what registers on the potentiometer. This has not moved in many years. So I will say I am not optimistic about this. This is a very, very small bolt, probably about an M2, I would guess. Uh, and you can see there's rust just all, all around this thing. Actually, maybe that's not rust. Maybe it's just broken down, rotten hay gunk. Oh, I can't really get a grip on it with the pliers yet. So we're gonna give it a little bit of heat. I'm not gonna get out the regular torch because uh, I think that's possibly, arguably a little too much. Oh, I have a feeling we're just going to break this right off. It's so tiny. Whoa, it's coming loose. It actually moved. Come on, vice grips, release. Oh, should put some of that oil on these old things. Hey, it's, it's coming loose. We got it out. What a blessing. I thought that was gonna be a, oh, come on, pop open. There, I thought that was gonna be a disaster. Foamy tapping goop, and now. Now 
Nice. All right. Time to clean this up on the wire wheel a little bit. And we'll take it from there. Now it's really fun. It's going to be getting this center section out. Hopefully it's not stuck too, too bad. So I'm just going to brass hammer here a little bit. So I got it back together thanks to the finest nut and bolt making it work skills that I could have. New gauge is in. Uh, I believe that officially winds down the last of the pre-hitting the field repairs with this machine. And I'm pretty anxious to try it out other than the blatant hackery, which I kind of had to use to get that back together. I'm pretty happy with how everything has gone here. Nothing else fought me really more than I was expecting, but I will say, man, was that ever time consuming or what? Just going through and doing the adjustments that we did to everything, giving everything a good, all the chains and everything a good lubrication cycle. We'll do that again before we use it, obviously. I don't know how long I've been sitting without oil, so I wanted to over lubricate it. So hopefully the oil we put in will kind of saturate things and we, when we lube it again before we use it, it'll really soak things well. Uh, doing all that, messing with the pickup, replacing like three chains and adjusting pretty much everything else, uh, cleaning out those sensors, all this, doing the wheels and the wheel bearings, the lights, a bunch of other little stuff that just added up and took time. Took about seven days of, of this. Now, a couple of those weren't full days, so maybe like six, six and a half, but holy cow, man, like I said, essentially a week working straight for one person to go through and do everything that we did. It's just, everything is so labor intensive and so tedious but I think we did it. So I will say the best and worst parts of this, not even the gauge makes the worst part. The best part of this is getting everything started up. And uh, I don't know if I really filmed much when I was lubricating this, all the chains and everything. But when I started, it's all rattly and not sounding all that great. And I start applying oil to all these things and it smooths out. You can actually hear it quiet down as you lubricate. And that was, the, that was the most rewarding part of this. You know, some of the squeaks and rattles and everything go away and it sounds 10 times better. Now the worst part of this, the worst part of all this, and this is, oh yeah, also I put a fire extinguisher on here. Uh, I, really they're supposed to go up there, but I don't want to because that can be a little bit slower to access and seconds kind of count when one of these things catches on fire. Really the only reason not to put that there is because it interferes with the twine components over here. But of course, my twine system's been like robbed and had parts stolen off it, so it doesn't really matter. And it's still narrower than the wheel, so you don't have to worry about clipping buildings and such with it. But anyway, the worst part of all of this is the gamble you take with used equipment. You know, but don't really know that right now because I have basically no round bailing experience. And as long as this thing holds together, basically if it works at all, I'll be pretty thrilled. Uh, if we get that out of it, we can deal with other problems down the road, but that's the worst thing about this whole thing You don't actually know if it's gonna work or not. All I can say is I really 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 hope this thing holds together and uh, Well If anybody wondered if you're gonna go through something like this, it took about a week for me to do it You know, I'm sure everyone on the internet can do it faster, but You know work from there if you got more or less things to do Kind of help you guesstimate if you know if you're thinking of getting something like this and doing it I might regret this decision, but we, I guess we won't really know until we hit the field with it. So whatever the case, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more random video. It's not always pretty, but it's real. Hopefully this thing will work.